Today we're going to be taking a look at something new from Elmo. It's a way to turn any monitor into a digital whiteboard. Kind of before we even get started, the reason why I went into this is uh, I noticed that Elmo had something new in their product line. This is something that they just released. It is the portable IWB wireless set CRB2. The reason why I thought it'd be useful is because I frequently have attorneys asking me, is there a way to mark up or draw on the monitor for the jurors to see something? So let's get this thing uh, opened up. So I don't even know what's gonna be in the box. I only looked at it very preliminarily enough to know that this was something that I wanted to have on the channel. And let's see what we have in here. So we've got uh, paper, uh, a plastic plate of some sort, A box and another box and so let's open up this big box first so here's the big box that we have we have a little box and then there is this kind of like l-shaped uh, bracket that goes on so let's open up uh, the blue box first and see what's in here in here is the pen and this is how you're going to be interacting uh, with the screen that you're writing on uh, they've inserted uh, a battery in here. This pen, it looks a little bit ridiculous. All right. And then we've got this very thin device here. This, I think, is the part that's going to be receiving uh, signals and inputs from this. Let's see. Inside here, we've got there's this 3M like double sided tape all over the place in this packaging. Uh, we've got a long micro USB to USB A cable and uh, nibs, nubs, whatever it is they call that they put on the top of digital pens. That's what this is. So let's get this put away. And then let's take a look inside this box. So here we've got uh, a power adapter of some sort a USB receiver, uh, this is the uh, power attachment, and then another micro USB to USB cable thing that goes into the other end. And then for here we've got this very light, I thought this was a metal plate initially but it's just plastic pretty flimsy but I think it's gonna get the job done so this is how it's supposed to sit on top of your TV I think or the monitor and then this part gets taped to the top of the monitor and there's notches down here and what the notches do is it tells you that this is how far offset from the screen uh, this sensor has to be but the reason why there's space back here on the back side of this is so that way you have a place to put cables, uh, and uh, the other transmitter portions. So this cable connects this to the link device. I want to try putting it on my monitor right here, uh, which is my 32 inch Samsung 4K monitor. Uh, I don't really want to mess with it because I really like the monitor, but for the sake of this experiment, let's get it done. Okay, so here's where this video is gonna start getting a little bit weird. I tried to put this Elmo device on top of my monitor, because remember, ultimately the point that I was trying, or the thing that I wanted to really see if I can use this for, uh, and more and more as I'm playing around this thing, I'm finding that I don't think I'm gonna be using it for this, in my intended purpose, is to put it on, like just slap it on top of a monitor that we set up for a witness in a courtroom, and be able to turn that monitor uh, into a touchscreen. So rather than having to buy multiple like planar touch systems or planar monitors which are expensive, buy one of these and every once in a blue moon when an attorney actually asks for this kind of uh, functionality, be able to just put it on there. Um, but here's how it works. So I think you have this plastic bracket which gets uh, basically double-sided tape onto your monitor uh, because I think that the Elmo device here needs a certain amount of distance between itself, the sensor, and uh, the top of the monitor. And also it's offset, so it's actually deeper out by about like an inch, an inch and a half. 
Uh, so it needs proper offset. So there's this weird L bracket here, and this is affixed up here with double-sided tape. So uh, permanently on there, uh, not gonna be able to get it off. So the whole like, you know, kind of plug and play thing is not gonna work. I have done some quick calibrations uh, on this thing just to tell it where like the corners of this monitor are. And now this pen seems to work. And so I can use it here and you can kind of see I'm using it as just basically a, a mouse. Uh, and this button, button number two, uh, when you're using it just kind of like as a wireless mouse, uh, serves as right click. Uh, actually pressing down serves as like a left click. And if you hold it down as you're drawing or dragging this along the surface of your monitor, um, then you uh, it's like a, a left click and drag. And so the real, I, I'm not gonna spend the whole time like this, uh, but I wanted to show you this just so you can get an idea of what the lag might be if you're gonna try and write uh, with something like this. So let's open up. There's a, a piece of software that you can download and then you have to separately request a license for even though it's free. I'm not sure why they go through that. Uh, for this Elmo Interactive, I don't know if you could see this one here. I'm also recording this screen, so I'll show you like overlays of the entire screen, but so you can see like the, the real time, how, how laggy it is or isn't. Uh, so let's get that open. And what it does is it basically creates uh, for you a whiteboard. And you can see there's, I'm not touching my pen to the uh, screen yet. Uh, but once I do, you will be able to see kind of like what the lag is like. Is it laggy? Maybe. So screen writing. Now I have terrible handwriting to begin with. Uh, writing now like this with my arm kinked around doesn't really help. Uh, but you get an idea of like, what is the lag like? All right, so let me get a different tool out. And this interactive, this like the functionality, this digital whiteboard stuff, it doesn't do a pretty that bad of a job of it. Um, I would say though for like sometimes it's hard to get it very precise and get it into the exact spot I want maybe because of the sensor placement and the harsh angle that I'm trying to get this to. I don't know if this bracket is quite installed correctly or if I even really need it. But anyway I can't, there we go, I deleted that spot. Let's make my pen a little bit narrower, more finer point so that way I can show you uh, what it's like. Let's draw some circles. Sometimes it recognizes what I'm doing and sometimes it doesn't. I think a lot of times when my hand crosses over this way, it blocks the view of the sensor. So it's a line of sight kind of thing. And so here we've got these lines and it's a, you can see there's a little bit of a lag. It's not terrible. It, it's a lot better than if you're trying to write with your finger on something, like if you're using the pen tool in trial pad or on those planar systems that they have in federal court. This is a lot smoother and the interface is pretty nice. There's this whole interface that's in here. So you can load in uh, different photographs and other images. I can't imagine running a trial from something like this. Uh, this is definitely designed for teachers because if you look at some of the default uh, backgrounds that are available, you can get graph paper, line paper, lines for writing, like teaching kids how to write letters uh, and even a baseball diamond. So that's something that's on there. Not something that I would use, but just to give you an idea of kind of who's this for and, and, and what it's for. Um, let's clear all this stuff out. In fact, let's just get out of this altogether. I'll close the app. One thing that I did think was a little bit interesting that you could do is because this is basically a pen as far as your computer is concerned, you can open up a PowerPoint and here's an example PowerPoint uh, from a CLE I did a little while ago. And what you can do is you can use it as uh, uh, a, a way of writing on the screen. So let's say you have a PowerPoint and you wanted to mark some stuff up on it. You can do that. There you go. Pen. So it lets me kind of draw all over. And it again, it's a lot smoother on this than it would be if I were using my finger on a planar system or if I were trying to use my finger in trial pad. Um, but it, it introduces some interesting kind of like issues. So let's turn off this PowerPoint.
One of the things that you have to think about is this requires a computer, which is one of the things I wanted to avoid and one of the reasons why I avoid having a planar system uh, or a touch, uh, one of those ELO touch uh, type systems in a courtroom. I don't want to have to bring in basically a computer per setup, uh, per courtroom. Uh, it seems unnecessary. It seems like you're adding in an element, another potential failure point. And so I don't really like that. Uh, the other thing that I don't like about it is right now we're mirroring my screen. The problem is then if I wanted to say put this overlay on top of what TrialPad is putting out so that a witness could draw on it, I'd have to trick the iPad to thinking that it's connected to a monitor when it's actually connected to a computer. And then I have to trick the computer to thinking that the iPad is a webcam or at least the screen or the second screen that iPad is putting out is a webcam. And then on that computer, uh, this screen overlay and the ability for this thing to write and connect would then work. And so that's a, a lot of steps. And I don't think that that is a very stable way of running things. And it's certainly not something that I can leave with a set of attorneys to just use eight hours a day for a multi-day trial. And so I don't know how to use this thing is the ultimate kind of takeaway. I thought I might be able to use it in a courtroom. I'm not sure that I can. I know that I can hook one of these things up and connect it to a document camera, but if I'm using a document camera, the jurors can see on the document camera what I'm writing on and I don't need this, right? And so I, I'm not really sure what I need it for. I've seen also uh, in the in installation instructions uh, a way of installing this guy so that you could put it onto like a whiteboard that you might be projecting something onto that whiteboard. But if you're projecting an image onto a whiteboard, why can't you just draw on the whiteboard with a whiteboard marker? I mean, that's the whole point of that, isn't it? And so I have a hard time understanding why you would use this. Yes, it is marginally better than using your finger to draw in trial pad, but the level of complexity that you're introducing in order to even potentially make this thing work under ideal conditions, let alone trial conditions in front of a jury, uh, that just gives me heartburn thinking about it. And then the other thing to think about is the cost. This thing is $600 retail. It just came out, it's brand new. $599 is what I paid for this marvel of technology. That's what you can get an iPad for. And so for that, you pay a little bit more and you get something like TrialPad, uh, or you get, probably you can get any of a number of free whiteboard apps if that's what you're really using it for, to be able to draw on things. And so, the use case for this, at least in a courtroom setting, uh, very marginal. And for a long time, I've been looking to ELO Touch and Planar Systems and all of the uh, courtroom touch systems to be able to up their game and make their systems work a little bit better. Um, but whether I go to, um, I've gone to Infocom to see what they're doing there. Uh, I've been trying, trying to track all their press releases to see what they're doing new in terms of the touch space because I think that that's something that in a weird way is going to become more and more important, especially as uh, more people are used to just touching exhibits and interacting with exhibits uh, directly. And so I was hoping that I had really great high hopes for this even despite how weird this thing is. Uh, but unfortunately, I just don't think it's there. I have a couple of idea, other ideas of how I might be able to use it for this YouTube channel, so it's not a complete waste. Uh, if that doesn't work, ultimately, I'm probably gonna try and find a teacher that I can donate this to uh, and put it in one of their classrooms because otherwise, this thing, if I can't find something to do with it real quick, it's just gonna sit in a box, in a corner, in a drawer in this office and never really get used. Uh, but that being said, if you use something like this, or if you use this, uh, I would love to hear about how you're using it and what you're using it for, whether it's educational, legal, corporate. Uh, I would love to hear about what your use case scenario is and whether it's something that took a lot of training or a lot of kind of setup and logistics to get, to get working. Uh, but uh, put that in the comments uh, it, and I'd love to talk to you guys down there and uh, thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.